it, it's really a pleasure to see a, a, a full day dedicated to gaming in India. I have always maintained in my recent interactions with industry outside India and to journalists that India gaming is going to, is at the cusp of explosion. It's completely at the cusp of explosion. A few months back I was at China Joy, which is the biggest gaming convention in China. And everyone worth his name in gaming business, right from the biggies to the indies, they were all lining up to tap the China market. And 300 million Android phones, big gaming culture, uh, many, many app stores, OEMs driving app stores. And the consumers were exactly the same what we see in India. I, I was telling people that I would be happy to chew my words if in three years, I see a India joy or something similar happening here in this country where everybody, big, big guys, huge amount of consumers, developers, really kind of having a big expo. And the day is not very far with 40, 50 million Android phones today, 5 million being sold every month. Uh, people, 40% of app downloads being games. I think this is the right time for us to really evangelize gaming, uh, tap to people who are common-minded, think, work together, and be prepared for that explosion growth, which is really going to happen in, in this country in gaming. Before I start, uh, I just want to understand how many of you are the game developers here in the audience? Can you please raise your hands? Okay. How many of VCs and investors who are interested in gaming? Okay. Uh, rest of the people are from VAS, carriers, OEMs. Uh, is that right assumption? Okay. So, a great mix because for us to develop a gaming market, we need content, which developers are going to come. We need discovery distribution from OEMs and VAS, and obviously need packs of monies and bags of monies to really kind of either spend in consumer acquisition or in game development. So without much ado, uh, introduction has already happened. Uh, you know what are we do, what kind of experience do we bring to the table. And I want to just flip this. Uh, Q&A typically is in the end, becomes much more a formality. Let's start on what you guys want to understand and hear. You know the panel topic, you know what we guys do, if you have heard about it. If there are some three, four, five things which you want us to cover in the next 30, 40 minutes, it may be value addition for both of us. So let's start with your questions which you want to, us to address. And if there is none, we can all have coffee and enjoy. Uh, what I'll do is, now I'll pose your questions here to our experienced set of panelists. And let's try to see if you can get answers. If you don't, please feel free to say that, guys, you have been diplomatic, you have been beating around the bush, and you have not been a spade a spade. We would like to be very straightforward and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and if you're not satisfied from answers, either I should say no, sorry we do not know, or we try to convince. That's, that's the only two options which we have as a panelist. Is that right? Right. So, great. So, there is a, one cluster of the question which we had really is that from a consumer point of view, uh, what sh so there are three three segments of question which you've got is one is a set of developers and what should be the game slide strategy how should we monetize how can we get roi how do we get all that stuff second set of question is on india india scale what's the way forward for gaming what is happening today when is going to go break and all of it and third question is when do we get respectability indian developers in a global forum what, when can we see an angry bird or some other thing really coming out? Is it possible? And if it's not possible, what are the challenges? I think these are the three broad clusters. And uh, dipping into your experiences, uh, Nitesh, I'd like to come first to you on the India piece. What do you think is the size of the gaming market today? What are the challenges? And what's your point of view on gaming moving forward? Sure. So uh, let me uh, uh, first talk specifically about the mobile space because that's my area of expertise and also I think that's become the largest uh, uh, market uh, uh, you know, driver today. So I would say from a revenue standpoint of view, uh, on the carrier side of business where customers are paying via carriers, downloading via carrier decks, etc. In India, the business is today about roughly about 500 crores a year uh, on an annualized basis. Uh, recent, uh, I don't know if my panel Absolutely. is covering, yeah? yeah. And 
uh, on the App Store side of the business, so I'm talking of your Google Play and your iOS, recent reports uh, suggested that it's again run rating at about the same level. Uh, I don't know, Manish, you have any thoughts here? No, I'm saying, continue. I'm yeah. Broadly, so, I'm so saying 500, so, 700 so, crores. So, cumulatively, I would say about 1,000 crores on the mobile gaming side uh, today uh, in the market. On the console side, I don't have real numbers with me. Maybe Prashant can add uh, to that. Uh, he would have better idea. But clearly, what I'm seeing in India is uh, a massive uh, opportunity on the mobile side. I'm a very uh, firm believer that mobile is going to be the biggest uh, driver over the next couple of years for the gaming industry in India. And therefore, a mobile-first strategy for developers makes a lot of sense. If anyone wants to add to that. Uh, Manoj, you have been in, in the business of discovery enabling discovery at Airtel, Samsung, now Micromax. You have seen the very closely firsthand how the market was, what are the challenges and what, and you have some bright views when we are discussing pre-panel. What do you think is really, uh, was happening, is happening and going to happen? I think the biggest puzzle and biggest piece of the puzzle as far as revenue is concerned, as far as experience is concerned, is the fact that how do I solve the problem of discovery? I mean, it's not about mobile. It's about, I mean, FFCGs have told us, the more you are there on the street, the more you are consumed. So it's not a rocket science that we are sharing as a panelist. I think the mindset of the ecosystem players, be it the operator, be it the platform, like an app store, or be it the OEMs, have to enable discovery. And when you enable discovery and create experience, money will fall. I think the way we approach today is, where is the money? and we'll create the experience. I think that's the way we, where we go wrong. Uh, you know, I was sharing it in a pre-panel that there are certain titles which, which are in tens and thousands on Play Store. And we've embedded them for the last 15 months and done about some 20 million users. Unknown titles, completely unknown. I mean, I, if I tell you a few of them, the Dark Man, the Fruit Devil, go and check out on the Play Store. They come on our, on our smartphones for the last 12 months and 10,000 downloads, file like downloads. But the way we consume the experience, knowing the realities of the market, we sell a lot of smartphones, but you're kidding me if you're saying they use a lot of Google Play. They don't. Google may fin fish any data and say that they use a lot of Google Play, but our consumers do not even know that they need a Gmail. And when you tell somebody, a Yahoo Mail or a Redif Mail guy, you need a Gmail boss to use your phone. I mean, my brother in my family, he bought a Samsung S4 for a long time. He didn't use it because he didn't want to change his email ID. So there are challenges of the ecosystem, be it the internet access, be it the, the Android per se. You still have to come to more than 13% of English penetration in the country. How do I go on a Play Store and search my game? I don't even know the na name of the game. That's why you see Google of the world first time doing a, a full-blown campaign on TV. YouTube doing a campaign on comedy. I can't imagine these guys doing it. Just because of the fact India is a very diverse market, they will still need a lot of segmented games, easily discoverable. Now, easily discoverable, you have to remove the roadblocks of internet, you have to remove the roadblocks of effort. You know, the way gaming is looked at here is, is very different. I mean, it's not serious gaming as there is, it is there in the West, or the console gaming. I mean, we were talking about it. We missed that era of PC gaming and console gaming and suddenly came to mobile gaming. And now we are going back to the Xbox and the PC gaming ways. I mean, most of us here and my friends, you know, educates me that uh, they've played a lot of those server-led games, Counter-Strike and many of those which are very popular in, in colleges. So I think that era will come. But at uh, Micromax, what do we do? We believe that give discovery to a content which is compelling, which may not be very high graphic. A couple of people I heard that they're saying that high quality gaming. I mean, I beg to differ, and, and I'm a student of this particular industry, but uh, Tetris or, or Snake was never a great high graphic gaming. Very popular in India. It's still very popular. So we should not chase the other way. We should chase and give the customer an experience. And that's what is coming out now, people saying free to play, free to play, freemium side of it. Give a customer access and experience and let him decide if he wants to pay. It's not a question of 
not wanting to pay. I mean, if somebody were to tell me when I joined Micromax, somebody were to tell me Micromax customers does not have money. Nobody tells me this today. It was, they didn't have access, they didn't have discovery. So, so what has been your both experience in terms of monetization of gaming from OEM and from the distribution publishing which you guys do? Let me take a crack at that. So clearly in India the monetization now largely has been happening uh, through the mobile carriers because it's relatively frictionless. It's easier for a customer to pay uh, via his uh, mobile carrier bill rather than uh, you know, use his credit card on Google Play or on iOS. Uh, there are customers doing that today on Google Play and iOS, but that's a smaller percentage. The other uh, revenue opportunities through advertising, uh, embedding ads uh, within your games. But for that, you need a very strong customer engagement. And brands are still, flirt, fl I would say, flirting with this uh, whole opportunity. They've yet not put in serious dollars. I'm hearing in the last few months it has started to change, but uh, it's still not getting there. So I would say uh, going forward, uh, at least over the next couple of years, still uh, one carrier billing is going to be very important. It's been much, uh, you know, uh, debated that it's, uh, or there, there have been a lot of issues in that whole space, but uh, it's still a critical way of monetization. Now, carriers over the last many years uh, kind of played spoil sport in the sense of, you know, taking very high revenue shares for just enabling this 70%, 80%, but that is also changing. So I can, say uh, with specific experience that in the last year, in 2013, many large carriers have started paying out as much as 70% uh, to the developer, which is the same as what a Google Play pays. So the other thing that will change is uh, with Google Play and all starting to integrate carrier billing in India, hopefully over the next year or so, that will increase monetization a lot. So I think uh, uh, in improved monetization through carrier billing and uh, more uh, uh, money coming in from brands is something uh, that will help monetization. Yep. Manoj, you want to add on to that? Yeah, I think uh, that's my favorite subject because I have a huge revenue target for the year coming up <laughs> and uh, it's tough to make revenues and uh, be it for any business. Uh, but we love this job and in fact, just to answer this, I would want to go back and say that what are the different kinds of ways one can make money? And before we start chasing money, I would again reiterate and underline the fact, build a soul and a concept in the game, money will follow. Brands will follow, operators will follow, OEMs will follow. But though it's not that easy. Um, India is a cash economy. India is not a plastic economy like US. So in future, there is going to be a point where gaming cards are going to be sold over the counter to unlock games. Not pay games, but unlock levels of games. That is for sure going to come. Airtel did the experiment, Vodafone did. There are a lot, at least about five, seven companies I know today who are doing uh, retail value-added services. That's going to happen some point in time. But in other ways, we need to make a concept in a game where a customer has a choice to pay by his wallet of choice. In a way, it may start with a, a telco billing. It may start with a credit card if, if, it, if, he, if he is okay to do that or he could have a sponsored wallet. Now when you take, talk about a sponsored wallet which is my favorite subject uh, in the last uh, 15 months, you're not talking about suddenly advertising. You know advertising can be many ways of advertising and I think we are covering that in the last leg of our uh, uh, day today which is consumer brand advertising where you could have the brands coming forward to fund that experience for the customer. But as rightly said by Nitish, you know, brands are flirting with that idea and they're waking up. Why? Because they are not in touch with the game developers directly. There's a whole network of agencies to pitch that particular piece to them. And I was talking to my colleague, he was mentioning that now growing forward, I mean going forward and uh, a lot of these ad agencies will start pitching up this piece together in their overall strategy to a brand. So. How will an individual game developer go to a brand is the question. That's not possible. But you have experiences like Sponsor Pay, TapJoy outside the world, or you have your Indian experiences in uh, companies like Pocket who are doing this uh, sponsored wallet wherein your choice of content is being allowed to unlock or download against a form being filled, against another app being downloaded, against a Facebook-like, 
against a Twitter post. So there are various options for a developer. He needs to create an open source SDK for him to adapt his game to any kind of wallet. And there will be never any other wallet than these four or five wallets, credit card, telco, sponsor pay, and brand-led payment. Obviously, they can be charity where somebody can just keep doing various games. Yeah. So just to, uh, from a monetization point of view, uh, just summarizing, carrier billing is the way to look at uh, from a direct consumer transaction, whether it's 1% of consumer which are going to pay or 5%. It's the last mile experience of carrier billing which is going to make that tipping point. It could be as high as 20%. Uh, in China, the, one of the fundamental reasons for people to pay is the carrier billing is very, very well integrated across all app stores and everything. And I think with uh, Micromax, Samsung, Nokia, uh, Google Play, all these guys integrating carrier billing, I think we are going to see a big uptake. Second, my personal view is, and, and I agree with the Manoj, is that incentivize advertising, which is what he was talking about, Tabjoy or AdColony or Pocket. India, 99% of people will still love to play free game. How do we make a cliffhanger of a game? How do we make a psychological thing and give them reasons to watch an ad and get in-game currency to use it in the game? Because we are a very value-conscious society. We really like to take things free. We do not, we have also time. We are not really hard pressed for time, the majority of people. So these two factors that we have time, we have, we love to think things coming free to us, will give a huge flip to this incentive as advertising. And finally, the branded guys have to think about gaming. They are flirting. Uh, some people are becoming more savvy, some we cannot. And I think from a gaming industry, including our company, we are also guilty of not really doing some concentrated, cohesive efforts to really prom promote gaming as an engagement mechanism for the brands and showcase to them what is possible, not possible. And uh, I think that is something, these three are the only clusters which one needs to really look at as we kind of move along. Moving on to the second cluster and Prashant, uh, there are a couple of questions which we had is, what could be the content strategy? And is there a, pos is there a possibility for us to really look at uh, local themes and making world-class games around those local themes. And with a company like EA, which has been in presence in India for quite some time and has the wherewithal, both from talent point of view and, and, the, and the cash point of view, have you considered looking at India and making games on local themes and then and really expanding the market in, in that manner? Um, so, a uh, couple of things. So, one is I'll go back to uh, some of the points which are made regarding monetization, etc. I think uh, most important thing for us is to uh, first and foremost get large number of users to our brands. So, we've got brands like Need for Speed, most Need for Speed, Real Racing, Sims, Tetris, Bijeweld, etc. Uh, the strategy globally has been to actually acquire hundreds of thousands of users. And in, in India, getting those number of users is not very difficult. Um, it's easy for you to get users. And our freemium strategy in terms of getting consumer to come in and engage with content is working quite well. Now, having said that, there is there are different segments of market. Now, if you look at an iOS, typical iOS user who actually has a credit card and is, is not averse to actually spending a couple of dollars of money in terms of acquiring content in those games, etc that user is pretty much taken care of by virtue of the international content because he understands English, he understands what content is coming in, etc. We also have a major challenge of actually addressing the balance 98% of user who does not have a credit card and who is, who is to actually engage with our content. Now, typically he has been engaging with our content over the last few years, especially on mobile platform through the telco operator stores, etc., with subscription services and different types of services, and has been playing our content. So we've got large brands, uh, number of brands which actually we could actually take local and get some kind of user engagement going for uh, these guys. Uh, some of the challenges which we have today are that brands are not willing to spend money, the kind of money that we are seeking. Second is that uh, even on the operator side of business, the monetization has not been happening primarily because of the low revenue shares, etc. But I think what is very heartening to know now is that now we are actually at a tipping point. Today we have a run rate of about 4 million smartphones getting shipped every month, which 
at the same time next year is going to be around 8 to 10 million per month now when you're looking at these kind of users who are all going to actually come in and if you look at top six seven eight brands from a publisher like ea and who's actually able to acquire hundreds of thousands of users every month then there is a huge opportunity so i would say yes there is a huge potential all the publishers ea included have been looking at india very very seriously and I think there is a great potential in terms of uh, us being able to get one of these guys to build in um, uh, certain content or games, etc. locally. Uh, our company has been investing into resources. We have a full-fledged development center at Hyderabad. We've got people who are working on games, services, supporting our global businesses, etc. So that skill ability is getting built up. And when the time is ripe, which I'm assuming is going to be in the next 12 to 18 months, I think we should be able to take that plunge. A, a very direct question to, uh, yeah. to EA, just a second. Uh, if EA is not going to do the market building activity, who else will do it? So it's not that EA is not going to do the market building activity. We actually are building the market by getting consumer to engage with our brands. Now, for us, the best possible way of getting a consumer to engage with our brands is to actually offer the product to him for free which we are doing on different platforms. So if you look at a Need for Speed Most Wanted, when we launched the game, it was at about $5 on Play Store. Today it is selling at about $1. We are also looking at possibilities of doing those games on a free model. Sure. And uh, we've been doing, so Real Racing is a free game, which has got millions of downloads which are happening. Some of the challenges of operating in India and the data limits, etc., which uh, the operators have put in is that you're not able to get high-end native content downloaded on devices, which also is getting sorted out very, very quickly. And in the next 12 to 18 months, once we have the 4G LTE, which has been placed, and you have devices which are costing anywhere between six to 10,000 rupees, and millions of those devices getting into market, then we are actually in a very good position to actually start monetizing all this. So to your question, yes, we've got large brands. We've started investing in acquiring users here, and we have large number of users. And when the time is right, we start monetizing. I think it's great, because what you are getting, um, creating a behavior, by giving content free to the users and giving them exposure to what quality of content is and absolutely uh, i think that's a that's a big big one from here manoj you wanted to say yeah. something you know two of the points which uh, prashant mentioned i had a different point of view on that uh, and before i ask this question i just want to up update my memory and understand from prashant that is candy crush different than visual or is there something that i not able to understand in candy crush which is different than I played visual at least a couple of years back. Um, okay, so Candy Crush, I would say, is a different, uh, is a different version. It is, uh, uh, it is a game which actually takes you on a story-based model, which is where most of our games are actually going today. So if you look at something like uh, Plants vs. Zombies, it's again taking that stories, story model. So from a simple one level game it is actually taking it to multiple levels and there okay. are user engagement uh, user engagement is a bit different okay no i just wanted to understand the gameplay in, in whatever little i understand about gaming so because i didn't find it different and therefore i couldn't understand why is everybody sending me candy crush invitation on facebook i don't want to play okay uh, just two points which prashant mentioned and this is just by experience there's no rocket science here smartphones everybody seems to be very excited about smartphones uh, we sell about some 30 lakh devices in a month, about close to about a million smartphone, about 2 million non-smartphones. I mean, people will be surprised, 65% of our revenues come from non-smartphones. And who believes that smartphone is the way forward for gaming. It is a way forward for gaming because it's an open SDK. You could do a lot of those things that you cannot do any which way in a MRE or a native game uh, platform. But India is a feature phone market. India will be a feature phone market at least for a couple of years to come in. So if you are chasing revenues in the, in the near months or near future, you'll have to balance your effort between smartphone and feature phone. The second part, which uh, Prashant mentioned, that brands are not interested on the face of it to do AdWord gaming. I mean, I've been uh, fortunate to have experiences with my peers and partners to see couple of RA1 games or a couple of, uh, you know, uh, advertising within gaming. I think the way it's being pitched to a brand, it needs to be pitched as in the overall strategy. Today it is pitched as taking out some percentage of the budget. That is where 
it's not happening because when you're talking to the brand, you're not talking to the brand directly. You're talking through an agency. So therefore, it needs to come in the overall positioning of the brand and overall campaign of the brand. And I seriously believe, I mean, I'm, I am ready to work with developers like uh, EA for that matter, Gameloft or uh, uh, Jump Games or uh, Nazara for that matter, to walking up to the brand to tell them how discovery of a game which has experience, storytelling, a brilliant thing that which Prashant mentioned, which can actually build a great mind recall for a brand in a mobile customer. But then the game developer has to make provisions to create that if it is not there in the beginning. It needs to have that client server interface to create that engagement. So these two points I wanted to correct. Yeah. Absolutely. We're running short. Let's, let's, the third larger point which was about uh, how do we build a world-class IP? How do we build a world-class strategy for gaming? How do we build a world-class company from India? And do we have a talent issues? Do we have uh, the vision issue? Do we have paucity of intent? Or do we have paucity of money chasing those big dreams? So I'll just, it's an open question to all three of you and would like to. I think uh, Manish, uh, given your recent experiences with Real Steel, etc., it would be best to be running short of time. Yeah, if you, you can share your experiences here. So one of the things which, uh, Nitesh, last question, uh, last thing guys, there was a question of uh, how do I take my games globally? And if I'm, as I said that if I'm a developer, I'm making a game, what are the best ways for me to really take my game globally? And what do I need to do? Do I need to do localization, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And, and since you are the guy who's really... Uh, sure, I think uh, obviously as uh, the app stores allow uh, you, know, you to publish uh, globally, you can always try that. But it also makes sense in many markets to work with uh, specific publishers who are uh, you know, pretty deep in those markets. Uh, you know, for example, if you want to look at the China market, which is very large, or you want to look at Middle East, some markets there like Saudi Arabia are very large. You can always work with publishers. To give you an example, uh, we were actually acting as a publisher for a large uh, Russian uh, freemium game developer. Uh, they have a very popular game called Airport City. And they wanted to lo launch it in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia and all. So it's not, sometimes not just about uh, language, but also about a lot of, uh, you know, local culturalization, etc. So that game featured uh, air hostesses uh, wearing mini skirts. And if we were to publish that in uh, Saudi Arabia, then I don't know uh, who would be hanged and who would be in jail. So sometimes you have to work with local publishers to expand your market. Uh, and there are many markets where you could publish directly as well. So, app stores, easiest way, uh, if your game is in English, put it on Google Play, Amazon and all of it. Discovery remains an issue. If your game is good, it'll rise. And the best way to check it is spend some $2,000, $5,000 in consumer acquisition, look at your KPIs. And if the KPIs are working great. Otherwise, the best route is the publisher. Because publisher has the wherewithal to take that consumer acquisition and more importantly, handhold you in providing the local experience that what needs to be done in this game to really make it happen. And there are enough and more publishers in the market today, uh, which you can tap, uh, you can do Google, and you can figure that piece out. So global distribution is, an, is a very easy, easy uh, piece to do it. If your game uh, is in English, uh, in my opinion and my advice is that just don't look at India market, take it as a global market. And if you do not have funds to really spend on consumer acquisition, definitely for your first two games, three games, go through a publisher, get that experience of go-to-market and then kind of do that. Yeah, I think we are absolutely running out of time, four minutes up and I'm getting dirty glaze from our uh, MC. So I will leave it here. If there are any more questions, we can uh, connect individually to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.